Okay, so we're going to start off with phase diagrams today, and this is basically what they look like. Temperature is on the x-axis, pressure is on the y-axis. Now, you just need to know the basics about phase diagrams. So, one of the only things that you need to remember is that a phase diagram is divided into three parts, and these are solid, liquid, and gas. It's not that hard to remember, because if you think about it, when you have high temperature and low pressure, that means that the molecules are going to be confined in a pretty large area. And if the temperature is high enough, then the molecules are going to have really high average kinetic energy, which means that the molecules are going to be moving around really fast, and that is going to symbolize a gas. Whereas if you have low temperature and high pressure, that means the molecules are going to be confined in a smaller space, and since the temperature is lower, your average kinetic energy is also going to be lower, meaning that the molecules are going to be compressed and in the solid form. So what you can uh, deduce with a phase diagram is if you have a substance at a given temperature and pressure, so let's say here, and you want to know the melting point of the substance. So what you do is go over to the right until you get to the liquid form. And so at this pressure, the temperature of the melting point would be right here. So you would read it off as there. But if we had a higher pressure, like here, and you move over to the liquid, the melting point would be a little bit higher. So this is what a heating curve looks like, and instead of having temperature on the x-axis and pressure on the y-axis, we now have heat added and temperature. So when you look at this for the first time, it's kind of like, what is this? So let me just explain what each of these um, sections, I guess, are. So first over here, when we have a bit of a positive slope, that's going to be the um, solid heating. So as you add heat to the solid, the temperature increases, no surprise. And then it gets to this horizontal plateau, and that's when it's going to be melting. So the solid is melting during this uh, phase. So if you add more heat to the solid at its melting point, so this is going to be the melting point, you can read it off of here. The temperature is actually not going to increase. It's going to stay exactly the same, except the solid is just going to be melting. So the bonds between the molecules are going to be broken instead of the temperature raising. So then now that the solid has melted, it's going to be in liquid form. And here is when the liquid increases in temperature or you're heating the liquid. Same thing as over here. If you add heat, the temperature is going to rise. Then we get to another plateau, and that's when it's going to be boiling. So it's basically like what we had over here. The liquid is going to gain heat, but its temperature is not going to rise. Instead, the molecules are going to get further apart and become a gas. And then here is just the last phase where the gas just heats up. And also, this would be considered the boiling point. So we have melting point and boiling point. All right, so a cooling curve is literally the exact same thing as a heating curve, except we're starting off with a gas and going to a solid. So here is going to be when the gas cools because you're removing heat. So the more you take away, the less the temperature is going to be. Then here, the gas is going to condense. So we can call this the condensation point instead of the boiling point, but they're basically the exact same thing. And then we have the liquid, since the gas already condensed, that's going to be cooling. Once you remove more heat, the temperature is going to decrease. And then we get to another horizontal point. That is considered the crystallization point. So this is when the liquid um, starts to condense, or not really condense, but crystallize into a solid. And then here we have the solid cooling. Don't forget that the um, 
condensation point is equal to the boiling point and crystallization point is equal to the melting point. They're just different names for the same exact thing.